So I smile and look forward to the future, to the setting sun. To the setting sun is the future, but it's setting. That's like the day is over. It makes me laugh. Flipping through the pages of my old journals With every turn another memory And dusty words bring pictures to my mind I see the marks of the passage of time What a weird way for me to answer, uh, to start this video. <laughs> answer, start this video, whatever. I don't care. Anyways, uh, it's the 18th episode of Journaling Through the Years. Can you believe it? And we are still in the famous whale journal. We're having a whale of a time. I don't even know what that means. When I went to camp in high school, one of the shirts we had was said having a whale at a t having a whale of a time at Camp Ravencliff. What does that mean? I've never heard that before or after or since that time period and I don't even think I have that shirt anymore. But I remembered it and did I have a whale of a time? I really can't say, but I did have a lot of fun because camp was one of the best things of my life. I am um having coffee out of this mug. It says, to accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream, not only plan, but also believe. And it's by Anatoly France. No idea who that is, but I saw this quote. Saw it on a mug. I think it was at Goodwill, and I bought it because I really liked it because I, I believe in that. I my, my quote, one of my quotes is, um, what you visualize becomes your reality. But it's not like you're just sitting there just like visualizing it. You're actually like, that's the first step. It's visualizing and then you are discovering the steps needed to get you to where you want to go. So I like to have that mug test with that quote as a reminder. Okay, let's dive in and let's see what my 15 year old self was experiencing. Um, back, you know, this first one is a kind of silly, another little silly one. The green man was here. He signs his name in purple. See, it's purple. Because he likes the that color best of all. Well, you know, got to do what you got to do. He would like my lipstick then and my hat. He wants to know if you have ever painted your nails with purple pens. Well, have you? Not just your fingernails, but also the ones in the wall. Ha ha or used purple pens for your lips. I can't say that I have. This is not purple pen. This is lipstick that I have on. Instead of lipstick. Let's see, I'm, I'm using lipstick. It might not work, but it wouldn't look. It might just work, but it wouldn't look nearly as nice. So I asked you this question. You can comment below and I'll remind you at the end. Have you ever painted your fingernails or even the nails in your wall with a purple pen. Hmm. Now I think we're going to get a little bit more serious. More serious? Yeah. Now that you've tread along this path, that your bare foot has touched the soil, your paddles have stirred these waters, the hills have rang out with your laughter, your voice has chattered on mixing, chattered on mixing with the others. Here I sit watching the sunset low with its gold, red, violet, and deep blue. I feel you by my side, your very essence, your very essence. This makes me laugh a little. Like it's like a scent or like a deodorant or like a BO smell. Your very essence fills the air and your warmth covers me like a blanket. Security is your left arm and trust is your right. That seems very biblical. I hadn't really read the Bible at the time, but doesn't that sound like a very biblical line? Security is your left arm and trust is your right. And it just is so interesting that I read that and I see a, a woman, a girl that was growing into a person, a woman that would become very relationship addicted and looking for another person to be her security and her trust. And I'm only just kind of coming out of that and discovering my, my ability to care for myself and find security and trust within. 
So I smile and look forward to the future, to the setting sun. To the setting sun is the future, but it's setting. That's like the day is over. It makes me laugh. The dawn of a new day. People are colors, you once said. We all have different shades to add to one another. Some colors you may not use. Thus, these are those are the people traveling beside you on the course of life, yet you never know of their existence. So I guess like just people you pass on the street. And I like the use. You may not use these colors. You may not use these people. There are those people that are remembered from a very long time ago when you met by chance that stirs you to pick up a pen to write or call, yet you rarely do for lack of time. Aw. <laughs> it's true. Even back then, it's always been true. You have those colors which are your favorites. Those are the people whom you love and are with you always. Mm -hmm. Happiness fills... Happiness fills me. I am fulfilled with the knowledge of your love. Far apart our bodies. Far apart our bodies are. Okay. Yet I sit here in the moonlight. I sit here beside you. Oh, that's kind of sweet. I really like that. How sweet. Yeah. I mean, other than the, the line about the, what I talked about, the stood out security is your left arm and trust is your right. And, and, I think that there is some truth to having a good friend or a good partner or a good a relationship with someone that, that does, does give you a sense of security and trust. I think you first need to find it within yourself, but having a good friend can strengthen that area inside of yourself. You can, you know, if it's a good friend, you can, they can provide a mirror or they can help see parts of yourself that you don't see, whether that would be good or bad. I mean, that's a even if they're not a good friend, maybe there's, um, you know, people that aren't good friends that you have to walk away from. You have to learn to walk away because you see in yourself something that you don't, you're, you're not, you're seeing something in yourself you don't like, but that can be a lesson in well, that can be a, a lesson. That's, that's that person's significance in your life is to show you something, is to teach you something about yourself. Everybody has a reason for being in your life, whether they're friends, frenemies, however you want to be. Here's an interesting one. It, it, I've got like a hair in my face. You ask too many pointless questions, but how can I help not ask them? I, I don't know where this is coming from. I wish I knew why I'm, why I was writing this. Who said something to me about pointless questions? I'm curious and uncertain. My mind fills me with unending desire for knowledge and discovery. I think that's true still to, still to this day. I think there, there were times when it was um, for various reasons based on external relationships, whether it be with the church or someone else, some kind of abusive person. Um, I nullified that because, uh, because I, I couldn't really... Um, be true to myself, but ultimately I've always been, uh, having an unending desire for knowledge and discovery. I apologize if my questions bother you. Why apologize? <laughs> that person should just bugger off, but I must express what I'm feeling and thinking inside. Some questions we cannot answer and always question when we know why yet do not know. Some questions have two replies. To them, one is unending and one is understood. That is, this is, I was a pretty philosophical young teenager, um, and I'm reading this and I'm kind of like agreeing. Um, even now, I, I, I think it's interesting that I must express what I'm feeling and thinking inside because that's something I struggle with. And Something I wanted back when I was 15 or 16 or however old I was when I was writing this, somewhere in that range, um, that I wanted to express myself inside in what I was feeling and thinking inside. And it's something that as I've gone through life and encountered more and more abusive types and whether that and also institutions, um, I have had that kind of taken for me, uh, you know not being able to express and my feelings and thinking, but that I think is something that we all really want and that we don't always feel is given to us or 
based on life experiences, um, we feel like we're not being allowed to have that experience and so we're triggered by it. Um, I had that experience last night with, uh, with someone where they got upset with me because they were, I think they were triggered in, in a memory of feeling like they were not being heard or valued. And that wasn't the situation in my case. And it was late in, it was like 10 o'clock we were both tired and this person did apologize to me and we talked her through. Um, but I think that's something that I've experienced. I think, I think I was only starting to say, I need to, I want to be heard. I want to be seen. I want to see myself and to be seen and I need to express myself, but then, um, it, you know, it's been a struggle all my life based on my, uh, frequent abusive types. Um, I, some answers, some questions we cannot answer and always question when we know why when we know why yet do not know. I just, I mean, that's, that's so cool. That's like a very philosophical statement in the sense that we're always kind of, there's so many things like, why are we here in life? And we don't really know what's the poor purpose of our life. We don't know. We can kind of discover it, but when you can, there's all these layers. Why are we in existence? And there's all these different religious or spiritual beliefs that try to say, this is why, this is why we're on this planet. And they all are almost saying the same thing or they're all basically trying to define that. And really what it comes down to, there is no definition. There is no knowing uh, what is, there is no real finding that out until maybe the day we move on to the next life or whatever comes next. And that's the other thing. What happens when you die? We don't know. We have people that have had near-death experiences or have had or have died and been brought back and they can kind of... Uh, kind of uh, give that conversation of what happens and then what's else what is love we can't it's like these indefinable indefinable undefinable uh, questions that we know but we don't know and somehow it's the mystery of not knowing is what keeps us going keeps us striving I think for me personally I left fundamental fundamentalist fundamentalist Christianity and I, um, a lot of people I know that left became more atheist, or more, more atheistic or more agnostic. And I think I became, it became very personal to me. Very, uh, I became more, much more, uh, it became more about what I, my walk. And I, it would be more on the pagan or Wiccan side now, but I still have a, a lot of respect for, Christianity for Jesus, not Christianity, but Jesus and what he taught and who he was or whatever, what he stood for. Um, not the followers because things can get diluted and not all the followers, just the kind of the institution that it became. And that goes into other religions as well. There at its core, uh, Islam isn't necessarily bad, but there's spiritual tech. There's, there's things that were taken away from that and made to be fundamentalist. Or made to be, um, yeah, made to be fundamentalist, made to be, it's, it's been, uh, skewed away from what it really signified. It doesn't necessarily, the, the writer of it, um, Allah is the God they follow, uh, Muhammad may not have been as evil as, you know, the terrorists that practice that the same with Christianity. Um, Jesus Christ was definitely not, I don't believe he was what we see today in mainstream fundamentalist Christianity. Wow. <laughs> what am I trying to say? All that to say that I still have a sense of a belief, a spirituality that is very much my own. And I, I, I'm on this hunger to read different texts. I've, you know, I read the Bible backwards and forwards, if you can really read backwards. And I've read the, uh, Sirmad Bhagavatam of few years back and I do these things and I read spiritual texts like anything I read you know psychological texts all this stuff why what I've discovered is that every 
there's so many types of beliefs out there. And so some people would say they're all fake. For me, it's not. I don't see it that way. I think that there is this human need to want to have your questions answered. And so there have been all these ways of sort of like seeking that um, and trying to figure out what it is, why we're here, what comes after, all those things. And I think that's why I think there's something true. There's something, that's why I'm spiritual still to this day. Okay. But I don't want to proselytize or evangelize. I just want to live my life and be happy. Okay. Okay. Where are we? Um, some questions have two replies to them. Just two. One is unending, like we're talking about, and one is understood. So that's really interesting is that like you can have like a simple, uh, what is love? And I don't want to say there's two replies to that, but yeah, one is unending. It's like a philosophical, you just keep going, you just keep unraveling the onion and going deeper and deeper and deeper. Maybe the sense of self, you know, I'm in recovery and I have been for a while and there is a sense of discovery and you just keep peeling more of the onion away and, and more of the peels away and discovering more and more and healing more and more and releasing. Um, so that's that. And I think this is the last one that I'm going to read right now. It's, um, two more. We sit stiffly in these chairs. A comfortable silence fills the room, each of us afraid to break it. The first, the first time in days we've had to sit quietly and wait not watch the colors and sounds flash noisily across the TV screen or busily scuttling your day, busily scuttle, busily scuttle your day, trying to do it all. Now there is no hurry, except say the young girl writing this hurriedly scribbles to get it all out. That's me, the author, yay, that's me. This one small moment in time, they are one and the same bonded together, okay? Uh, I was in a waiting room going into some doctor's appointment at this time. I don't know what I was doing. Probably dentist. I know. My mom. I was with my mom and watching those people. There are Their conversations are simple yet mean more. At the end of this time, will they part with, a, with an I love you or act as if they never met? In a waiting room? I love you. It slowly comes to a close. Two companions depart with an old friend. I think quietly. My old lover comes to my thoughts. Why do I think of him now? I don't know what lover and wow. He wasn't really a lover. I just used that word, but I hadn't had sex at this time, so I don't think I could literally call him my old lover. But I think I was trying to be poetic and grown up. Uh, why do I think of him now? She reaches over for a magazine. Consumer Reports is the title. I hope she enjoys the tape I gave her. I don't, I think I'm going all over the thoughts. I'm, I'm, the tape I gave her had nothing to do <laughs> with the woman reading the magazine. Should I ask her about it tomorrow? It's her now, the one with the tan shirt who took the poisonous drops. What? She grabs a magazine, ending her listless stare around the room. How will I ever have time now? There is always so much to do. I feel as if I never get enough sleep. Too little time in one day for me to do all the things I want to do. Sounds like high school. She finishes the questionnaire and turns it in. Her comments on the f He comments on the fact that the cat has a good home. Aw. He's glad. She says she always keeps it indoors. Indoor. Maybe she's afraid it will run away. Okay. A heavy man walks in. Why do people let themselves get that way? Can they help it? The sunlight streams in through the blinds and the shadows dance on the green carpeting. Ooh, that was a very good description. The room is emptying. Our time here is slowly ceasing to be. I don't care if Dole is old for the job. I don't care if Dole is too old for the job. I'm showing my, my age here. What I want to know is if he will ever come, walk through my door forever and keep me warm and safe. Him, my immortal beloved. Oh, here we go again. My younger self wanting a someone to come and rescue her and give her security and love and all that stuff. Younger self, uh, maybe all the way up until about 42 year old self, maybe 41, maybe 40. Even though I didn't want to admit it, I admit it. Oh. 
Till then, this door, this entrance, seems like it has to be locked during all business hours. A play on that. A play on that thing you normally see. And that's really sad. I'm, like, closing my heart. But how will I know when he comes in the door if my heart is closed? I mean, he's just going to magically be like, I got the key! How Disney of me. People all seem to do that when they bustle by to bustle bustle by too busy to stop and notice the agony or the fear of those around too afraid themselves Ooh, that's true there are parts of me that are open yet some i shrivel unlock to and look through i try to be open to all yet sometimes i fear truth truth definitely very true and uh, she was about, this girl was about 10 years away before she finally got a diagnosis of bipolar and started working on herself. And when that actually happened, it was very hard for that girl because she had so many years and years. At the time, it, it seemed like forever. I mean, 27 years of trying to like really deal with all that was inside and not be afraid. She moves across the room, away from me, sits down near the magazine rack and pulls one out. She plucks away at her eyelashes, plucks away at her eyelashes while she flips the pages. A car door slams shut. Has he come to me at last? No, it's just another guy coming in the waiting room. And that magazine person, that was my mom. She does that. See, six o'clock. Oh, this is the next one. See, six o'clock? You'll notice we've been on time lately, the lady says, giving her old friend a peck on the cheek as they are reunited. He stands up as we approach. Yes, you never, yes, you were never early or on time before, he says stiffly and faking a smile. Ever since the song on the radio, my thoughts haven't strayed from our troubles and friendship. So we are meeting here at the St. Francis Hotel of St. Francisco to relinquish our friendship as we sip our martinis. Oh, maybe this is um based on something we read before the last week about the roller blade, roller blades. I don't know. Is it the same? I don't know. Maybe the same story. Could be. Who knows? My soulmate grasps my hand tightly and swings a briefcase in the air. I think it is. I think that uh this like we heard the song on the radio what was it um oh it was something uh fields of gold and then we're like okay i can't get this out of my head i need to bring this friend and the guy standing up and being stiffly and i think it was going from something i observed and then suddenly i started writing in first person so i like heard this person say that and i don't know who the other woman is probably like the guy, the oafish guys uh, from last week, his um, partner or girlfriend now, and then I'm with the other guy. This is roller blades, roller bait people. Um, I don't know. And uh, this is like the next day, like we heard the song and we're like, okay, let's meet up. He wants to forgive. Okay. My soulmate grasps my hand tightly and swings a briefcase in the other. A memory comes to me in a flash of a time when I stand in the hallway of my high school, my junior year surrounded by these fellows, heartbroken because of a fight with my boyfriend. I say, you guys will always, oh, so, you know, I was in high school now. They, I did not go to the high school with these, like the same school as these kids that I, these men that I, these boys that I'm writing about, but I just am taking a little bit of artic, artistic leisure. I say, you guys will always be my number one men, always and forever. They hug me tightly and I hug and I long for that safety and warmth of friendship now. That warmth, which is replaced with an uncomfortable awkwardness. So <laughs> that was like chapter two of the story of the roller, ba roller blade friends. That's what we'll call this one. Roller blade, roller blade friends. The roller blade friends you reunite. That's what this one is called. And I have one more question for you. I did not forget. Have you ever used a purple pen to paint your, your fingernails and other nails that you would find anywhere? Comment in, comment below on that. Thank you for watching and we'll talk next week. Bye. Patches of living stitched with the common thread. My life's like a quilt that's been sewn together I can't
get away from love If I went to the edge of the earth You'd follow me I can't get away from love If I go up to the heavens You're there If I make my bed in the depths, you're there I can't get away from love Baby, I was going barefoot in the summertime